I'm Keith Reynolds, host of Morning Coffee, and I'm here with my show co, Charlene <laughs> Chamberlain. We've actually had some fun today, mm -hmm. Char. Teasing you yes, about your teasing hair. teasing me about my hair, <laughs> which I'm going to go there Saturday get fixed. So Monday, he's going to look different. I am going to look yeah, different. I'm look. interesting, like, you know what I mean? Barbers see different things. They do. Obviously, that you, you know, can't just buzz yourself every, you know, I week. know, but you know what? I mean, it's hard. You know, it's hard to find a barber. It's hard to find a good barber. Well, I so, think Debbie will take great care of you. I, th I know she will. She was had such confidence. So who do we have on now? Our next guest is Lynn Landis. And it, your company is called? Food. Well, it's a, it's actually a meetup. What, is it Wild Foodies? The of, Wild Foodies. The Wild Foodies, Foodies of yes. Philadelphia. Yes. Wow. So, so it's a bunch of people that meet up and dine yeah. out? Yes. Actually, I started it five years ago. Okay. And it, there's a um, website called meetup.com. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm on So that. you can sign up mm -hmm. for Wait all kinds of interests if it's Not golfing dating. or uh, knitting or, you know, all kinds of things. So five years ago, I started a meetup. Uh, thinking, well, why don't we just get together, you know, uh, anyone interested, and walk around and start identifying wild edible plants, oh, you know, in the local parks, in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. things like that. And I'd been very um, active in a lot of, um, on a lot of issues, um, m many of them to do with health and the environment mm -hmm. and politics and all kinds of things that were you know, not that much fun, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So this was um, a nice break from all of that. And also I found, once I started the group, um, the response was unbelievable. People were just so curious about the subject. Mm -hmm. So it just sort of took off, and now we have almost 1,700 members. Seven in Whoa. our area. In Philadelphia. Well, it actually extends uh, beyond that, because we have people who come up from Delaware, one lady from Virginia, mm -hmm. you know, to come to some of our uh, tours. Right. Very nice. I thought yeah. you were cheating on me when you said you were on that. No, never. <laughs> so this is a bad time to come out with that. Yeah, some people think meetup is like a social, let's, let's yeah. and, and some of them can be, but oh, that's, yeah. that's not, not the real like, purpose. Yeah. It's for people who have similar interests. interests. Right. right. Yeah, and the, and the um, fun thing about it was that I really didn't know that much about the subject when I started the group. I just... Mm -hmm was very upfront about it saying, let's do this as a collaborative mm -hmm. learning experience. I knew maybe less than 20 wild edible plants, mm -hmm. but um, you know, the more I gave the tours and, and also we encourage other people to, to participate to participate and, and lead their own tours. Mm -hmm. And we always say, you don't have to be an expert. Don't tell people you're an expert if you're not, mm -hmm. but just, you know, get together with them. Um, people in your neighborhood, go to the lo local park or to your backyard actually, mm -hmm. and start identifying, you know, what's edible and there's just a ton of things that are well, edible. That, you know, that that's people don't even know about. They, they, Carol Moore was on last Carol week Moore and she talked about, a lot right. about if yeah. you don't feel well, go make some pine needle tea. Which or, we had. Yeah, we had pine I needle felt tea. Great that right. day. Right. We talked a lot about dandelions and all the different things you can do with them, but I'm sure there are many, many, many other plants that we're not even aware of that are edible or medicinal. Right. Well, there is one set um, exception to my wild edibles uh, list of plants and we have um, field guides we've put together we also have all kinds of um, uh, reference and resource material that people can take advantage of mm -hmm. online or you know purchasing books um, online things like that um, but everything is is generally uh, wild except for hosta and a lot of people have hosta in their yards. Mm, I do. Hosta, and yeah. hosta, hosta is from Asia, uh, mm -hmm. Japan and countries in Asia. And so it's been, um, it's been cultivated and hybridized for so many years. I'm not really sure which are the uh, completely wild original hosta mm -hmm. plants. But um, I call them nature's taco shell because you can take the young hosta leaves. I would take the young ones rather than, than the right. old ones. You can put chicken salad, really? you know, egg salad, anything right. in that right. hosta I've leaf. I've learned. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute. All my the, whole yard is filled with I hostas. I have hostas around my, and I yeah. actually have. And I have, love them. Yeah. I think I do have a wild form of hosta, but it doesn't look like the, the leaf hosta. is different. The leaf is different. It's, it's actually more of a round almost, leaf. yes, it's a round leaf and it's actually a, a taller plant. Yeah. I yes. got it from my neighbor who's a, oh my God, he has so many things in his yard. Well, in our field guide, uh, we recommend three different kinds of hosta that, you know, we found online that the chefs like to use. But, um, you know, I just go around tasting them 
just to see, you know, what the taste is, because mm -hmm. it will vary a little bit. But um, the thing about the hostas is they're very crunchy. So you can just bite it and crunch, or you can crunch right through that, Whoa. yeah. And as compared to some other plants like plantain, which is mm -hmm. not the banana, but the other, you know, the weed that a lot of people are taking out of their yards, it looks a lot like that, the same leaf, but the plantain um, leaf has these um, ribs in the back that are really tough. Mm -hmm. And so unless it's a, a young leaf, you can't really bite through it when it gets mm -hmm. to be bigger. So the hosta is different. It remains, you know, it looks the same except larger, and it uh, it is crunchy. So I mean, to me, that is the plant people should be looking at first. Something that's acceptable, conventional, easy to use, and the taste. Mm, yeah, I was going to say, what does what does a hosta? It's a taste kind like? of a bland taste. Mm -hmm. It's it's neither here nor there. You know, it's certainly not bitter. A lot of people talk about um, dandelions, mm -hmm. and to me, that's a bitter taste. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan mm -hmm. of dandelions. They do say we should have bitter in our diet because mm -hmm. it's important. Uh, but actually, the dandelion uh, blossom I like better. Mm -hmm. You just pick that, and it's kind of sweet, and that's what they use to make dandelion wine. Right. Yeah. So. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with some more interesting facts. That's. In a world where bankers have lost all interest, where robots and fat cats rule our fortunes, one woman Hi. will stand up and strive to do the impossible. Be treated like a person. Friends and neighbors will join her quest. Ordinary people will band together against the forces of corporate greed. And together, they will form Philadelphia Federal Credit Union, already in a neighborhood near you. Imagine the finest hand-selected USDA prime steak you'll ever have. The freshest line-caught seafood. Our Wine Spectator award-winning wine list and soul-satisfying desserts. Bring that together with the perfect date. The winning business deal. A memorable family celebration. Welcome to Rod Steak and Seafood Grill in nearby Morristown, New Jersey. Bring your appetite and feed your passion. Your credit score is yours, and an experienced credit expert, we want to help you really use it. With access to helpful Experian experts over the phone and online, we can help you use it to get a better idea of what info the banks have on you. Use it to get more choice of mortgages. Use it to make your money go further. Take the next step to improving your financial future with your free 30-day trial at experian.co.uk. Freppy's Tex-Mex, you can definitely taste the freshness in our food. You should definitely come to Freppy's because it's a great place. You can bring your family, very kid friendly. All my servers are amazing, friendly people. Everyone here is just happy to serve and, and I think it shows. The thing that sets us apart is the quality and freshness of our food. And I think once you try it, you'd be coming back. I'm Joe Desario, co-owner of Freppy's Tex-Mex in Plainfield, New Jersey. Hey, my name is Jimmy Love and I'm here to tell you about an exciting new television show called Buy, Sell or Give It Away. Tired of waiting for those high-priced newspaper ads to print? You call them up and you have to wait two or three days for the ad to show up? Well, no more waiting. Every day, right here at noon from 12 to 1, buy, sell, or give it away is going to be accessible for you to call in. Maybe you got a, a boat for sale. I'm selling my pet dinosaur. Maybe you want to sell your house. Give away some furniture to a family in need. Just give us a call. We'll tell everybody what you have for sale or what you're looking for, and your response will be immediate, and it's free. Hey, listen, summertime is coming. Maybe you want to buy a, a travel trailer or, or maybe rent a travel trailer. Just give us a call. Buy, sell, and give away a fantastic show. Don't miss it. Tune in every day for 12 to 1 right here at RadioVisionNetwork.com. Buy, sell, 
or give it away. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Martha, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Well, welcome back. I'm Keith Reynolds, host of Morning Coffee, here with my show co, Charlene Chamberlain. And we're here with Lynn Landis of the Wild Foodies of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And we are learning some interesting, interesting facts. About the wild things that just grow right in your backyard and how yeah. edible they are. Right, right. Um, so what we like to do is talk to people first about things they're familiar with. So even when uh, your daylilies come up, as mm -hmm. soon as those daylilies start coming up, you can just break them off and um, they're very crunchy and succulent, and it, it's a nice taste. It's, uh, I, I don't know how you would describe it, but it's a starchy mm -hmm. kind of fresh taste. Mm -hmm. Once it gets older, then, you know, it's not so great, but some people take the blossoms and also uh, fry them up and, uh, you know, saute them. Uh, but I'm a real fan of when they first start coming up, you know, you snap some of them off, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, then they'll grow. Their, their roots are also, um, can be cooked and eaten. So we like to we like to tell people there's things that are very conventional looking that are wild. You you don't want to go with uh, with the daylilies with a, a hybrid. You want to stay with the orange single mm -hmm. petaled um, wild daylily. Right. Um, but there are things like uh, you know rose bushes as well that you could use the um, rose hips mm -hmm. in teas and things like that. Yeah. But then, um, so what we would do is, uh, one of the areas I like to do my tours uh, around is behind the art museum, um, and it's uh, it's called Lemon Hill. Yes, I so am yes, there. it's a great place, and a lot of people think, well, you know, you would want to forage, um, at, you know, in the woods or on the, you know, in a field or on a farm. But to be honest, the cities are a great place to forage, and particularly abandoned lots. Now you might have to worry about the soil conditions and some mm -hmm. contamination, things like that. But you find more variety in a city actually than you do in a farm field wow. often. So uh, in our neighborhood, for instance, there's a ton of amaranth coming up. Mm -hmm. I have to say amaranth is the most delicious vegetable. You can just- Never eaten it. Oh, it's so what delicious. Is, what is amaranth? Well, amaranth is a, um, a plant, you can buy it at the nursery, um, at nurseries, but that's not the kind of amaranth I'm talking about. And it usually is like red or mm -hmm. uh, yellow um, blossoms. But the wild form of amaranth is just a green uh, plant that can grow, you know, three feet tall, sometimes uh, taller mm -hmm. with a lot of seeds. Um, originally from South America and Central America, but it's made its way up and um, there's several different kinds of species of amaranth, but when it cooks up, it's just delicious. It tastes a bit like spinach, but to me mm. it's better. And when it's young, like it is right now, it's got the seeds, so you get that extra tactile um, experience um, when you're eating this uh, cooked veggie, and it only takes a, a minute mm. to cook up. All fresh, all that stuff. Yes, yeah. whereas uh, lamb's quarters, which a lot of people are familiar with. No, what are lamb's quarters? Well, well, that's quarters. another green plant that comes up, and when it when it comes is up, is that also a, called lamb's ear? No, lamb's okay. ear is um, lamb's Different. ear is a cultivated version okay. of mullen. Okay. Mullen is coming up now, also, but that's uh, that's more of um, it's got a lot of uses, not so much uh, edible. How about so, mugwort? Uh, mugwort is another interesting one that's coming up now. Um, I'm just mentioning because I pulled a lot of mugwort out. Last okay, week mugwort down. has all kinds of uses. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so it's also called sagewort. So mm -hmm. think of sage, think right. of that herb. Mm -hmm. And that's how you would use it maybe with a turkey or poultry dish. Okay. Um, and it's an herb, it's not a vegetable dish. Um, so then some people also use it in teas. It's supposed to elicit more lucid dreams. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. You know, I'm just hanging on to every brain cell I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to experiment. Okay, so it's kind yeah. of psychedelic? <laughs> well, they said it, it, it gives you more lucid dreams. You can, you can right. remember them with clarity, mm -hmm. I suppose. Some people say it doesn't do anything like that. So, and it's got even other uses and I'm not going to go into that. Okay, <laughs> but it's it's it, it really grows up in a lot of places, mm -hmm. so it's it's abundant. Okay, we're going to take another commercial break, and then we're going to come back. Uh, 
Yeah, find out some more about things yeah. that are in your backyard. I want to find out on break what were, what's what other thing it does. So, <laughs> of course you do. Here, we have an attractive orange and a distinguished apple. The two similar, but opposites. In theory, a wingman is needed, or perhaps a wing lemon. A friend to the orange and an acquaintance to the apple, the lemon brings the two opposites together. See, with a little fresh thinking, the universe, universe can be surprisingly smooth. <laughs> when we make Beyond Natural Dry Dog and Cat Foods, we start with real meat as the first ingredient. We leave out corn, wheat, and soy. And we own where our dry food is made. 100%. Can other brands say all that? For nutrition you can trust and your pet will enjoy. Does your food go beyond? Learn more at PurinaBeyond.com. Fitzpatrick's. Deli dine for breakfast and lunch. And at night, gourmet dine for dinner with entrees and specialty sandwiches including certified black Angus cuts of beef and wild caught seafood, plus catering options for specialty events. Since 1989, Fitzpatrick's, your hometown place with upscale tastes. Apple Ridge is about Freedom. Apple Ridge is about community. Apple Ridge is about home. Apple Ridge, everything you want, more than you expect. Welcome to your new neighborhood. Apple Ridge Senior Living. Enjoy a maintenance-free, affordable luxury lifestyle today. Visit AppleRidgeSeniorLiving.com and find out more about the Apple Ridge experience. host of Read All About It. I interview authors of all kinds about their journeys of writing and the struggles that they face. You can watch my show at 12 p.m. on Wednesdays. Tune in to Radio Vision Networks. We hope to see you then. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856 336 2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Well, welcome back. I'm Keith Reynolds, host of Morning Coffee, here with my show co Charlene Chamberlain and Char, our guest. And we're talking to Lynn about all of the wonderful wild things that grow in your backyard that mm -hmm. are edible. And it's pretty amazing. Yes, it is. We just have uh, so much to choose from. As I said, in, in my neighborhood, which is Center City, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. so we don't have a yard per se. Right. Um, we have the amaranth, the lamb's quarters, something called poor man's pepper comes up. Poor uh, man's pepper, what's that look like? Well, it's it's a it's a cress. It, it's in the mustard family. So okay. it develops these teeny little kind of medallion seeds mm -hmm. um, throughout the heat of the summer. And you'll see them, you know, in the uh, sidewalk cracks everywhere. And you just take one little medallion and put it on your tongue and bite that and boy, you know, you wait a it's second, pepper. wait for it, and you get the pepper. Right, wow. right. It's just amazing. Um, the mustard crest family is, is really great. I mean, they, they produce different species from spring to fall. Um, you know, one of the things a lot of people talk about are the invasive species. So you, we have garlic mustard that grows sort of at the edge of, you know, woods. They mm -hmm. like some sun, some shade. And, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, government people want that contained, but... Um, Why? Because it's an invasive spe species, it's okay. not native. Our, our um, group takes the position that, you know, it's a case-by-case -case basis, mm -hmm. because most, uh, many of the plants you see all the time now are invasive. Getting back to the plantain that we talked about, mm -hmm. um, the plantain is, uh, has a broadleaf and narrowleaf um, varieties. But that is probably the number one medicinal plant in the whole world. Plantain. Really? Plantain, that leaf. Because, um, now, if you went to eat it, it's it's got a mushroomy taste. Mm -hmm. or And the green seeds, when it sends up its stalk, uh, the broadleaf sends up a stalk that has seeds up and down, the, this little stalk. 
and the, the narrow leaf it's just at the top but if you've got a yard with weeds in it plantain is going to be oh, in there in there a, mm -hmm. a lot okay. it's 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 everywhere but people don't realize what a phenomenal medicinal uh, plant that is. Well, what does it do? Well, it, it's, um, it's an antibiotic, antiseptic, um, and, and it's a coagulant. So if you have a, um, a cut or you know, a wound of any sort or a bee sting, it's good for that. It's, mm -hmm. I will say, stinging nettles, you want uh, jewelweed, which is a different plant. Jewelweed. Yeah, but okay. some people use it for that too, but a jewelweed's great for stinging nettle. But getting back to plantain, so um, I had a um, case of diverticulitis, mm -hmm. um, and, and I just took a little bit of plantain and ate it every night. It was gone like within 24 hours. I didn't have a really? problem. Really? Because it's, it's, um, it's healing, and it has a, it has a, um, a, a coating as well. So it's healing internally and externally, both. And it's a coagulant. So, um, you know, a lot of us are eating a lot of foods like almonds and mm -hmm. almond butter and things like that that are um, anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, they basically thin out our blood a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, that can get to be a problem. And um, so you, you need to have your vitamin K, mm -hmm. um, your kale and spinach and other things as well. And so this this is in that uh, grouping, um, but it's you know it's it's just a phenomenal plant, and um, you know so it goes internally and externally, and um, and it, but it also dries out. So I've tried a lot of uh, plants. Um, I don't use um, soaps or detergents or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I I'll, I'll use plants like for my laundry. I'll take some uh, pine needles and some uh, spearmint, mm -hmm. a mint. Uh, put them in the blender with some water, sieve out the um, the fiber, right. and then put that in the laundry. Mm -hmm. And um, so that does a, a couple of things. Those things, again, are also kind of antiseptic. And well, yeah, old. pine needles, definitely. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, they'll also help keep away things like, uh, you know, um, uh, if you have woolens, we would, would protect them mm -hmm. from moths. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'll use those things for, for that kind of uh, a thing. I'll use them. I'll use the pine needle uh, mint combination on my floors mm -hmm. uh, to wash the floors. Um, even in the winter time, you know, the mice will come, and I'll just start using that a mm -hmm. lot, and they'll go away because these things have, you know, uh, like menthol odors mm -hmm. and other things that they're natural uh, um, pesticides, actually. So yeah. um, you know, you, that also means like the pine needle, which Carol brought over, mm -hmm. has the vitamin C. Um, you want to drink some of that? Do you want to overdo it? Well, we don't want to overdo anything. No. You know, right. so you, everything in moderation. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So where can uh, people find more information about this uh, meet foodies group. meetup right. group? Well, rather than give the meetup address, I'll j just um, people can go to wildfoodies.org. Wildfoodies.org. And then the link to the meetup group is there, and you can join for free. Um, most of the um, tours are free. Some of them, we have some professionals who charge a fee. Um, one of the things that's coming up is uh, August 14th, we're going to... Um, we're going to have a big charity event for a nonprofit in, in Philadelphia. And um, we had a professional catering company offer to do this and uh, concentrate on <gasps> foraged foods. Ooh, and it's nice. going to be the first event of its kind uh, in Philadelphia. Really? So we're very excited about that. So I just told our members keep August the 14th uh, available, and we'll be posting mm -hmm. that soon. So that'll okay. be very exciting. Sounds exciting. I mean, we have to. Can, can we come over and check it out? Yeah, yeah we well, want to come check that out. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be great. Okay, great. Maybe we'll bring a camera. Or yeah, two. yeah, absolutely. That would be fun. Well, this is going to conclude morning coffee for this morning. Uh, we've had such a great time, um, mm -hmm. and tomorrow. Uh, equally we'll, as fun. Yep, we have equally a lot of great as fun. We'll be right back too. at it again. Um, I want to thank our sponsor, uh, one of our sponsors, our food sponsor today, Jersey Mike's. Um, is supplying us our food at the studio here today and uh, they're also one of our food sponsors tomorrow along with mm -hmm. uh, some other I'll keep it a secret That's until right. tomorrow morning mm -hmm. but uh, have a great day and uh, hopefully you tune in tomorrow